Welcome to the shooting show. This week we have a busy pigeon shooting session on the Stubbles with Rob Tilbury, plus Byron checks out a Czech rifle from CZ. On a glorious day in the southwest of England, we join Rob Tilbury as he continues his crusade against the pigeon population. The deeks are already out and the scene is set, but will the pigeons oblige? But on the ground, Rob has more important things to do than taking the scenery. He's making last minute adjustments to the pattern to make sure everything is perfect. The farmer needs the fields of valuable crops kept safe from the winged marauders and every pigeon we get will make a difference. Nothing can be left to chance. Luckily for Rob, he gets an early bird in the bag to get into the groove. The last time we filmed Rob, it was a frustrating day, but it looks like we're in for a better one this time. Two more pigeons soon join the first on the ground. and then two more, but there is a plentiful supply of birds to take their places. Lured by the promise of easy meals at harvest time, the pigeon population has swelled to large numbers around the farm. Rob sits tight and waits for more of the horde to descend, but he's left sitting expectantly for a tad too long. Finally a chance comes Rob's way but his mind is already made up, it's time for a change of tactics. Not doing things by halves, Rob directs us to do a 180, facing out over a cut field that was behind us before. Resetting the hide and the decoys is a time consuming process, but if we achieve the numbers we're hoping for, it will be well worth it. We've barely got ourselves out of sight in the hide when the first bird starts to decoy. Rob swings through but the pigeon flies on, but we're confident the next one won't take us by surprise. That's another miss, but Rob has barely reloaded the Browning A5 when he gets a chance to make it third time lucky and he takes it. Proven again that everything is easy with Ely. This decoy pattern is a mixture of plastic deeks and dead pigeons kept in the freezer solely for this purpose. It certainly seems to be working. Now they're coming in thick and fast.
The bag is beginning to verge on respectability, but already the afternoon is beginning to wear on. You might think this would spur Rob on to get shooting. Instead, he's out adjusting the pattern again, but as he tells us, this isn't just down to supposition. Rob, you um, just been moving the, the decoys around, why is that? Um, well, we've got a very good wind vane up there in a in respect of a huge uh, wind turbine and we saw it move round uh, so the wind direction's changed and I just want to uh, keep the area open for birds coming in into the wind um, so we've, you know these things sent to try us and we just have to uh, move the pattern round and keep it open and keep the killing area in front of the hide um, with the changing wind I hope it doesn't come right round um, too far but uh, I think we're okay at the moment it's looking quite good. The wind was in a fairly uh, south southwesterly direction and there's come round to more of a south southeasterly direction now and I just wanted to change the pattern around a little bit keep it open uh, keep the birds coming into the right area um, and I think it, it's it's a good idea actually just keep on top of that um, uh, make sure it's uh, the pattern is uh, in good order. There's only one way to tell if Rob's latest pattern will do the business, and that's to get right back at it. And there's still no shortage of pigeons willing to oblige. OK, so I took two shots at that one. It just limped with a leg down round the back of the tree and then crash landed over in the corner there. Um, we go and pick that up in a minute. Uh, I don't, I think it is dead. Um, but uh, it's worth keeping an eye on the bird till it, uh, so, you know, just in case it does drop. Uh, so we mark that one and we make sure that we pick that up. A few successful shots later, we're on the move again. This time, we're stationed in the middle of the field, using the hay bales as a convenient way of camouflaging the hide and breaking up our outlines. Well the hide, uh, we've used uh, the straw bales that are in the field to give a really good windbreak and some good cover and basically put the net on one side of that uh, and it's worked really well because we're on a very exposed uh, bit of land here at about 500 feet um, and without that uh, we'll be having a job holding on to the net I think. I think it's really useful to have straw bales uh, behind you as a windbreak it's very exposed up here it also gives because uh, it's so high you know you don't get the birds looking into the hide pigeons are very good at spotting you um, and it, it, you can't beat really good camo you've got the hide and we make that really good and we add some straw to it etc but you, you're standing up with the gun and you want to keep the bird coming into the decoys right to the last minute and that's why uh, camo and your hat and your gloves and everything else is really important. At this third spot of the day, Rob's keen to get on with it. That is, as soon as he's placed one last deke. The bird's just moving about. Um, they've decided perhaps they want to come out and feed. Who knows? They sense the weather might be changing for showers coming in or something they want to get out and feed but the the pattern's pretty good and uh, we've got a lot of bounces out now from birds we've shot I think the hide's pretty good they didn't seem to take any notice of the hide and us in it we could see those crows It, came, it was only about 10 yards away, something like that. I, couldn't, I, I just couldn't bear to shoot something that close. It would have um, obliterated it. It's a better one, isn't it? There's a million about down there, but I think they just... I reckon those bouncers have really helped. There were a load on that bank there and we couldn't see them. 
They must have been coming up the valley and landing just over there. One of them come this way a bit, really. I'm half tempted to move this hide in front of that other bale if they're going to come up and land on that bank there. Okay, so we shot a couple of pigeons now and uh, it's a good time to uh, use these as decoys on bouncers. Um, simulate flighting birds and this is a really good decoy bird now. Yeah, this isn't for the squeamish, this bit. Yep, that's why it's called a bouncer. <laughs> Perfect. With the birds starting to show interest again, it's time to find out how this location weighs up yeah. against the previous two. It's fits and starts really. We've had rushes of birds coming in and then uh, long periods with nothing. So it's it's the way pigeon shooting goes really. I don't know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's possibly other ground they're feeding on, they get moved on, um, changes in weather, wind conditions, different times of the day they feel like feeding. So you've got to stick it out really. Left and right. What? Missed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another really good day on the stubble, uh, 40 pigeons shot, picked up about uh, 20 of them so far. Um, nice bit of ground here, looking forward to uh, coming out stalking later, but the main priority is to keep on top of uh, pigeon control uh, during the time when we can actually get out uh, across the stubble with the Land Rover really and set up. It's a lovely little bit of ground here, uh, looking forward to coming out again. Rob there, bagging up on the stubble's first harvest, and now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, brought to you by gunbid.co.uk. This week we report live from the Midland Game Fair at Western Park. One of the last major events of the year, it's a must attend for countless shooters and exhibitors. We walked the aisles for two days to get a feel for the atmosphere and sniff out some top new gear. Shotgunners flocked to the Blaza stand to check out what could be a revolution in gun fitting. Clay Shooting Magazine's Danielle Hicks was there. As you know, gun fit is always a bit, bit tricky, especially yeah. with people who are not doing it a lot. This sort of takes out the, the, the mystery of, of the whole gun measurement mm -hmm. thing. You can, you've actually got the measurements on, yep. on there. So all you have to do is fit the gun yep. and read off the measurements and, and you, you've got it there, it's foolproof. What we have done, just to confirm whether the customer's actually looking straight down the gun or at a slight angle, okay. we've put a laser here. Right. So once you've established that this is what you like the gun to fit, you put a point on the wall or further down the line, you look at a fence post with a white board behind it. Yep. You get, literally, you get the customer to mount the gun, shoot the gun, and then you will then find that there's a laser dot on the wall. And you can then confirm simply, is are you point of impact right? Or are we just forcing the gun into us to make it fit? With the temperatures dropping and the game seasons beginning, it's a busy time for new clothing launches. We asked a deer hunter stockist what's new this autumn. I'm Ryan Lee, right here at Western Park uh, on Kemsa Outdoors, representing Deer Hunter for the UK. Uh, the blizzard, it's got um, a deer hunter in the lining, which makes it waterproof when it's and breathable. So you're not going to get too hot in it, but it's going to keep you warm, like in very cold temperatures. We do sell quite a bit of the recon at the moment. It's a very modern take on camo. 
which I think, especially the younger generation as well, are, are liking a lot because it's multi, multi use. Sporting Rifles Chris Dalton is a new addition to the Basque Trophy measuring team and he told us how his first public measuring event went. We're very early here on sort of day one at the, uh, at the Midland. Uh, I think we've measured about 25 um, row heads so far. There's a follow to measure and there's a couple of uh, month jack been through. I know there's some more coming this afternoon. And then a gentleman came in just now with, um, with five heads shot in Gloucestershire, which are absolutely superb. These are probably the smallest, the other three are exceptional. Um, certainly, probably going to get a couple of platinum medals and maybe three gold medals. I think it's quite good as well that heads of this quality are actually being brought along for the, for the BSC Sporting Rifle team to measure, so it's quite exciting for them. In the Airgun Expo, BSA caught the press's attention with a remarkably British PCP. Introducing the new addition to the BSA family, the Gold Star SE. It's regulated, it has a fully adjustable stock, available in three stock options. It has onboard pressure gauge, new air stripper, and we're hoping that it will appeal not only to the target shooters, but hunters alike. And at 899 RRP, it really is going to be the, the uh, ideal shooting companion. In one of our first ever episodes, we featured the Great Wall Steed. Two and a half years later, Great Wall was back with a brand new model. There are a lot of improvements to the 2015 model year Steed. There's something like about 30 major changes to the car, some of which aren't immediately apparent because they're within the skin of it in terms of the engineering changes that the manufacturer has made. It now has repeater indicators rather than being mounted on the wing, so it looks perhaps a little bit more like a premium German product as a result of that. In addition, it has a tyre pressure monitoring system which is mounted in the rear view mirror. It has a new instrument binnacle, which is really quite upmarket. Um, the audio, which was already very high quality Alpine, has now been upgraded to a double din system. It sounds really nice, really nice quality to it. And also it has uh, rear discs instead of drums as it was at the point of launch back in 2012. And Great Wall also sponsored the Clay Shooting World Series, which came to a thrilling conclusion at the fair. We found time for a word with the winner. Not a bad prize, is it? Not a bad prize, no. This, um, this win um, comes not long after the Fitas Classic. The Fitas Classic, a couple of months ago, yeah. You are so, shooting on form, it seems. Well, it seems that way, so I can't seem to miss at the moment. You've got a, a bit of a run for your money from Mr. Rose, the unclassified shooter. How yeah. did you hold your nerve on that last shot? Well, try not to worry about what everybody else has shot and just shoot your best, really. We've got the white gold, white gold final next week at Westfield. Hopefully, I can put in a good show as well there. And the final word of the fair belonged to Ogden's Leather Goods. On the final day, it's now four o'clock and it's been a superb show. And as you can see by the state of the stand, there's not a lot of stuff left. We've had a fantastic show. I'd just like to thank thanks to all my customers who bought our products and who'll be buying them in the future. That was the Shooting Show News. We'll see you at Western Park in 2015. This week, I'm upping the stakes a bit. This is a CZ 550 Magnum in 375 Holland and Holland. It's not a rifle or calibre that many people in this country are going to find much use for. But if you're somebody who likes to travel abroad, whether that be into Europe or particularly into Africa or North America, you may be looking for a rifle just like this. Now, I actually had this rifle on test from Edgar Brothers a couple of months back. Um, I was looking for a 375 myself and I liked enough of what I saw that I sent it back and then went on the hunt for one of my own. Now as you can see, I haven't scoped this rifle up. Caliber like this, this kind of rifle, yeah there are plenty of people who shoot 375s uh, with a scope. They tend to be wide field of vision, low magnification scopes, but I'm opting to shoot this without, so I'm going to be using the iron sight. The rear sight, you can see the, the flip up leafs here. That is 200 and 300 and uh, the, the back V block is at 100. I've never really understood why you have uh, these kind of graduations on a rifle like this. Yeah okay uh, 300 would be nice but the likelihood of you taking a shot with open sights at 300 yards very slim indeed. What would be far more useful is a 100, a 150 and a 200. You can get aftermarket um, rear sights that just fit into the dovetail on the top of the barrel here. 
The front sight also wasn't quite to my liking. Uh, the main reason is that it just was quite difficult to see. Now, again, not a particularly difficult fix. Uh, what I did initially, just while I was playing around with the rifle, was to put a blob of tipex um, just in the end of the bead there. What I think I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take it to a jeweler's and get them to drill it out and put in a little brass bead in there. Horizontal adjustment is done at the rear and that's simply done by drifting this block left and right. You undo a screw which sits underneath the 300 blade and that um, slackens it off and you just get a drift punch and then drift it either left and right to adjust. For elevation you can get um, different height front beads and they, they simply pull out. You just depress this little button at the front here and then slide the front bead out and then you replace it with a, a different height and then that's your elevation adjustment. The action on this rifle is one of the, the main reasons that I was particularly interested in it. I think it, it's fairly well accepted that the most reliable and strongest action that's ever been made is the Mauser 98 fixed claw. Now that is exactly the action that CZ build these rifles in. If we drop it out here, you will see all the classic aspects that you expect um, from an old M98. We've got um, the rear locking lug just here. We've got twin lugs at the front, a really long fixed claw which grabs the, the rim of the case, pulls it all the way back. Ejection is achieved via a fixed blade which sits in the rear of the action here. That simply rides up inside the face into the slot, hits the left hand edge of the case and pushes it out while the right hand uh, rim is held in the claw and that flings it out to the side. You end up with a fairly energetic ejection that way. It's also very reliable. The rear of the bolt, fairly simple affair. Got a big old bolt shroud here. There's a cocking indicator and you fire the little pin at the back, disappears, you're left with a black hole, so you know it's no longer cocked. The bolt handle itself is a, a small bone of contention in that I just don't think it's quite positioned correctly. If we look at um, the way it sweeps down here, the actual bolt knob itself is sitting very close to the stock, which doesn't make it all that accessible for picking it up and reloading. Now obviously that is going to be a very important aspect of hunting big game, especially if you're going to be using this on big cats or something like that. There is one way around this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a rubber bolt knob to fit on the end here and that's just going to help increase the surface area. In actual fact, the way that I lift the bolt up is with the, the palm of my hand. So I've got a, a rubber bolt knob on the bottom of there. As I lift my hand up from the, the trigger, um, from the trigger and the trigger guard and grab it with the palm of my hand it should grip nicely. If we move to the trigger, now when I first got this rifle I had pretty much accepted the fact that the trigger was not going to be to my taste. So I took the rifle to pieces, started to adjust the trigger and within about 20 minutes I had the trigger shooting very well indeed. There, there's no way that I would, I would bother replacing it. Uh, the brake is just under three pounds and it's as crisp as you'd like really for a rifle like this. The stock itself is absolutely nothing fancy. Uh, this one comes in a fairly light wood, checkering where you would expect it. Not particularly sharp checkering but good enough to provide you with a decent grip. Uh, we've got the safety located just at the rear here. It's a fairly noisy safety. Um, it's not the quietest um, safety mechanism I've ever seen and there isn't really much you can do about it. If you r apply a reasonable amount of pressure and you're just slow and deliberate pushing it forward you can just get away with it. As you would expect there's no detachable magazine on this, it's just a floor plate. It's dropped via this little plunger here which um, it is good to see has a lot of meat to it before it will actually release. As long as the, the spring in here you know, is serviceable, it grabs a good chunky amount of the floor plate, which is good to see. In terms of balance, it's pretty good. Um, it fits me reasonably well. 
Uh, it feels a little bit long, given that I'm not going to be uh, putting a scope on it. If anything, it could do with an inch or maybe even an inch and a half chopped off just to bring the weight to the rear. Now, obviously, if you had a scope mounted, that's not going to be a problem at all. Now, uh, I'm going to take the action screws out and we'll have a look at the inside. As you can see here, this is a little bit different to what you're used to seeing um, in, in most of the reviews that I do. In that, first of all, we've got this dovetail, which I mentioned before, which takes the rear sight. But we've also got another dovetail underneath, and this provides a secondary um, recoil system. So we actually have a front screw in the stock, which goes in here and pulls this down into the stock. And there is also, if I get it out the stock, there is also a secondary um, bedding surface. So we've got, this is the first um, recoil lug, and this is essentially a, the second recoil lug. This sits in um, the full stock of uh, the stock itself and beds up against this face just here to provide um, another surface area to take the heavy recoiling. The only thing left to do is um, show you how the rifle shoots. Um, I've, I've shot it already and it, it shoots just as well as I expected it. Um, you've got to remember it is a, a 375 so it's not going to be one whole group but it's still shooting um, very tight so I'm very happy with it and it'll only um, get better as I do these um, small adjustments. But I'm certainly very content with my purchase and I'm looking forward as the winter months uh, start to come in to doing these little bits of work. It's quite good fun uh, just doing these small bits of gunsmithing and then hopefully next year when I head back over to Africa with one or two of my friends uh, I might be able to use it in anger. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and if you're not a member of Basque it's time to join now. Basque looking after your sport and looking after you.